Okay. Okay. Welcome to Robotics Two, and in today's class, I will talk about the project. I will also talk about some interesting things. And what I want to do is, I want to give you uh, some sort of understanding of the relationship in the material that we discussed in Robotics One and the material in Robotics Two. so uh, i hope all of you will enjoy today's class and today's class is super important so first and foremost i want you to go to canvas where all the projects are already posted project 1 is due today so today by 11:59 pm project 1 is due however if you look at the syllabus uh you get a second chance to correct your project and the idea is that when you some of you may not get all the concepts you may get the the project partially working but once you understand learn the concepts then you may be able to complete the project from start to finish uh the idea would be that if you turn in your project completely working no issues by the deadline then you will get the full credit however for some reason if you turn in the project with partially working you will not get full credit but you will get a partial credit so and you will lose points but if you make the corrections and upload the fully functional project by next class after understanding how the project is worked out then you will get half of the remaining credit however for the first project uh even if you turn in your project completely by thursday you will get full credit this is just for the first project because some of you may be uh, struggling with matlab some of you might have had uh, questions and then probably the schedule might have got adjusted by changing swapping classes so for the first project even if you turn it in by thursday you will get full credit however from project 2 all the way to project 9 from project 2 to project 9 if you turn in your project later than the due date unless it is officially extended or you have university excuse you will get half of the credit and the reason for that is we have to be fair with the students who worked hard and try to finish the project on time so for first project you can turn it in by thursday without losing any points but from next time onwards if you turn in your project late you will lose half of the credit any questions about this policy if you submit late the corrections not a choice uh i guess i don't understand uh, the the question so I, let me give you a hypothetical scenario say for an example if you don't turn in the project 2 when it is due say jan 28 but you turn it in uh, on the next date when the corrections are allowed then you will get half of the total credit which means even if you turn in your project completely the maximum credit that you would get is 5 does it make sense so 
but on the other hand if you turn in a partially working project and you need to be very clear so that mannat and i understand what is done so you can be honest and you can say hey this x y and z is working but a b c is not working so you would get par partial credit for x y and z clearly you won't get any credit for a b and c but during the corrections you can turn it a b c and you will get half of the credit that you lost now one thing i want to uh, talk about is i want you to look at the announcement and this is important project 9 is assigned and please note project 9 is sort of a culmination project uh, there is lot of stuff that i would like to teach but unfortunately because of the time constraints uh, and because of the way the class is structured uh, we may not be able to complete all the material however i want you to complete these matlab classes from mathworks first and foremost you know that most of you have done matlab on ramp and simulink on ramp last semester and similar to that there is signal processing on ramp control systems on ramp state flow on ramp image processing on ramp machine learning on ramp and deep learning on ramp so there are 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 these six mini classes you need to take and after finishing every class you will get a personalized certificate please note these classes are included free of cost as part of our institutional subscription to matlab so please take these classes that way you can add this skill to your resume saying that hey you are you have done signal processing control system state flow image processing machine learning and deep learning or uh, courses from matlab now all these certificates they are personalized they are due when project 9 is due which is the last day of Uh, semester or last day of classes however i do not recommend doing that on the very last day because these courses uh, will help you they will be super duper helpful when you uh, study the chapters so for an example if you look at the project 9 doc uh, one 26 you would if you finish signal processing on ramp when we study chapter 3 and chapter 4 that information will be helpful then control system toolbox when we start designing the controller for the autopilot system using linear control that information will be useful then we try to design the non linear control full state feedback the state flow is going to be helpful once we go on to the path planning and image processing related material in the course at that time uh, image processing toolbox is going to be super helpful and when we look at the the last topic which is path planning machine learning and deep learning toolboxes will be super duper useful so i would encourage you to go through all these so first and foremost if you look at matlab academy uh, they they offer two options either you can do these exercises directly on to their web web interface or what you can do is you can download the the required toolbox in your matlab and i will show you how to add that and you should be able to do it so you can do that just like last semester either directly on matlab and then you can actually do it uh, 
download it and do it yourself. Okay, any questions at this point? The next thing I want to talk about is I want you to go to go to module. Uh, the projects are designed in such a way that you don't need any specific toolbox. If you look at the textbook, the projects are designed. However, if you if you are in a if you learn some of these toolboxes, it may ease your work. It may make help you get the things done quicker. So you don't need specialized toolboxes to do the project. But if you download the toolboxes or get some familiarity with the toolboxes, you may be able to do the project uh, quicker in some cases. The, the next thing which I want to talk about is I want you to go to modules. And please go to modules. First and foremost, you have slides. These are the slides that we are going to discuss. After finishing off chapter, I will upload my notes. So you will see one more module that will be notes or PowerPoint slides that I, I, I actually annotate. Then what I want you to do is, these are the MATLAB codes that we will be using in class. Here, I'm posting the links to the video lectures and these video lectures are in 4K and they look very nice. And one thing I want you to know is I have added some additional material on uh, state space models in chapter five. So these are uh, the lectures from MathWorks. And to be honest with you, they are each of them is like 10 minutes. So, and the, the beauty of it is they have videos and they have beautiful visualization, cartoons and animation that I may not be able to discuss in, in this class because I you need graphic designer and all that support to create those beautiful animations and cartoons and the videos. So when we study chapter five, please finish this uh, state space models module from MATLAB. It will hardly take uh, 30, 40 minutes, but that will enhance your understanding. When we study autopilot design aircraft simulation in chapter six, so this is a 30 minute video. This is another 30 minute video. I mean, 10 minute video. This is a 10 minute video. So what, what I recommend is if you watch these videos, uh, they are like, uh, they are designed and they are developed by professional developers who create academic uh, animations. So that will give you a very nice intuitive understanding. Same thing with PID control. There are a few uh, topics, few lessons, and each of, each of that video is about 10 minutes. So you can watch it while you are in the bus going from Tempe to Poly, or if you are, you can watch it on iPad, you can watch it on um, phone. Whenever you get 10 minutes, just watch these. These are very nice and that will enhance the understanding. Same thing with sensor fusion. Uh, each of these videos, there are six videos. Each video is about 10 minutes with beautiful animations, actual videos of system working, actual data collection and MATLAB exercises. So they are very fun to watch. So I would strongly recommend that these are the additional videos uh, that are made by professional uh, video developers, educational video developers that will enhance your understanding. Last thing I want to show you is if you are gonna do the project nine as your honors project, then it talks about the drone control. So in this class, we are going to talk about the, the autopilot control and design of UAV that is fixed wing. We are not going to talk about quadcopters, but 
the basic principles are exactly the same so starting with the fundamental principles how you can apply those to control a quadcopter using matlab is discussed in these videos then when you look at uh, the deep learning i would strongly recommend watching neural network part 1 part 2 part 3 again 10 minutes videos but they are fantastic videos they will give you the basic understanding of what neural network is and how does the neural network work we will not discuss reinforcement learning but i just want to tell you that it might be a good idea to make yourself familiar with reinforcement learning because that is the that that is how a uh, big uh, the ai uh, google ai uh, used that that ai google uh, used to beat go master because the, it's called reinforcement learning which means learning by observations and that is an upcoming field in the uav dynamics if you go to graduate school uh, i would strongly recommend to look at 4 plus 1 program offered by our school uh, in robotics and autonomous systems that will give you a masters degree and a bachelors degree in 4 year 5 uh, years so you will have a bachelors in egr and masters in robotics and autonomous systems if you do that and you will get opportunity to take advanced classes in perception machine learning uh, reinforcement learning that is uh, would be that would be very helpful so i would strongly recommend and before i go i just want to show you robotics and autonomous ms issue so so please take a look at this program and as part of egr program you can continue on to systems engineering but you and you can get 4 plus 1 that will give you a, a bachelors in egr and masters in robotics and autonomous systems and some of these classes that we are studying right now will be counted as part of your masters so please take a look at it and uh, that will be uh, very helpful if you are seriously interested in a career in robotics okay now i'm going to go to the class but before i begin i want to answer one more question is what would you upload as part of the project deliverable and uh, what you will upload is all the files needed to run the simulation and a brief description of what is working what is not working description working not working so you will upload all the files okay now i'm going to go back to uh, the today's lesson okay how you upload it is honestly up to you whether you upload it uh, as a document or if you upload that as notes i am totally okay with it
but it's the the grader manna should be clear uh, you are welcome to upload the animation or additional information as you please but at minimum you should add all the code again i do not have any preference uh so if you want to uh, upload uh anyways that is convenient to you that i am totally okay with it to be honest with you i think it would be best if you were to upload your usual files and a zip file that includes all the required files to run the code okay i i think let me let me put this down in uh, in some sort of uh, guidelines okay so so we are clear so 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 i'm going to provide some guidelines for project submission now idea of the project is you demonstrate your learning so what you have learned so i would recommend first upload all files second create a zip folder a zip folder with all files needed to run the project and then third a brief description and you can add in this description the parts of the project that are working the pro project not working or partially working and then you can add additional information that you prefer now when i was helping some students what they did some students sent me an animation of what they have some students sent me a pdf file file with pictures and description if you like you can submit a document describing your work so i would recommend i would say this is required this is required this is required and this is optional upload one zip file containing item 2 3 and 4 yes i would i would uh, so you are absolutely right i uh, i should have included the guidelines with the projects uh, but unfortunately uh, i was not sure that uh, how the uh, evaluation would go so uh, i was trying to come up with a a, a program that will uh, run everyone's file 
and then individually it will help me grading so i was trying to automate the grading but uh, but unfortunately i couldn't finish it on time so we have to stick to this method but by next robot next course robotics 2 uh, i should be able to generate a matlab code that will automatically check all your uh, codes again this is for just to be clear this is these are the guidelines for all projects these are the guidelines for all projects and i would include those in uh, the announcements so next to reiterate project 1 can be submitted by thursday 1159 without penalty however future projects if turn in late will lose 50% of credit so explaining the guidelines verbal uh, hey tyler as you know this entire video is recorded right so you can go back and listen to these verbal guidelines as many times as you want oh these are the all guidelines for all future projects so okay yes zubir's question is can we just upload one file containing the items 1 2 3 and 4 uh no i would recommend i would recommend only a zip file for the matlab folder this is only for matlab i tell you the reason why because what what i could do is if there are any questions i could just go to your uh, canvas download your zip file extract it in a separate folder and then i can run and code it by the way the project one solutions are already uploaded on canvas also one thing i just want to let you know for zip files please name them as first name last name project if it is one you say project one if it's two first name last name project two and they could be rar file or they could be zip file if you need a a package use win zip or win rar so if you go to the website uh, the canvas i have posted all the solutions how, what they should look like on to canvas okay i think i spent half an hour discussing the project and other stuff uh but uh, i have decided that in this class i'm going to go very slow uh because i want to make sure that you understand to the level and this is very important this is called f is equal to ma level which means you understand the very fundamental basic and my hope is that 
if I could get you or if I could explain the material to F is equal to MA to the fundamental level, the amount of time that you will have to spend learning the material later uh, uh, by yourself will be reduced. So that's why I'm going to go very slow and uh, I will try to discuss the material multiple times in a different, different ways. So feel free to stop me and ask questions. One thing that I want to tell you that I'm here to help you, but please don't wait till the last minute. I, I would be more than happy to discuss or answer your questions immediately after the class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So they, we, I can say my office hours, and this is very important, I need to add this. So, so I'm gonna say my office hours via Zoom will be Tuesdays and Thursdays after class. So don't wait till the last minute. All the projects are posted. All the, the hints are provided. Start working. And I don't mind helping you out with the projects uh, that are uh, ahead. I say if you're work, say if for fun, you say I'm gonna work on project four. And if you get stuck, I would definitely give you some hints. So feel free to explore the material on your own. That is the reason the entire course is uploaded online. Okay, before I begin, any, any other questions? Or did I answer everyone's question? Did I miss anyone? Also, I would strongly encourage you to follow study groups and you are welcome to discuss the material and be happy, I would be happy to meet with the group after the class to answer or teach some or reteach some of the material that you may need some additional understanding or if you need some help with particular aspects of MATLAB, I would be more than happy to help. Hey, if somebody wants to give me an access to Discord, I would be happy to join Discord as well. So, all right. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back and reiterate what we discussed in last class. So if you think about it, in the last class, we started with inertial frame inertial frame and this inertial frame is north east and down so for an example uh, when we were studying the inertial frame we said this is my north this is my east and this is my down north east down this assumes that my UAV is sort of like this. This inertial frame, it's fixed. It doesn't move. The next frame is the vehicle frame. So for an example, this vehicle is oriented in this orientation. Now, this is the CG of the aircraft. This is the CG of the aircraft. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna translate this frame, and this is pure translation. I'm gonna translate this frame all the way so that this north, east, north, east, down frame aligns with the aircraft CG. Now, one thing I want to tell you that this frame, this frame is not going to be aligned 
with the the vehicle but this is located at cg there is no rotation between the inertial frame and uh, this is called as the vehicle frame the next frame is called vehicle one frame now next frame is vehicle one frame now this vehicle fr one frame is rotation about z and that is the yaw rotation so you have a yaw rotation that leads to vehicle one frame then we have a vehicle two frame vehicle two frame and this rotation is achieved with pitch so this is with pitch and the last frame that we talked about is called as yes body frame this is rule which is phi yes that is deliberate the nose of the plane uh actually it doesn't have to be the inertial frame has nothing to do with the vehicle so for the, uh, for that matter i will take the vehicle off so inertial frame has nothing to do with the vehicle inertial frame is earth centered inertial frame is ec ef frame so if you have earth and our assumption is flat earth this is north pole this is the south pole that is how the inertial frame is going to be aligned now here is something interesting that i want to talk about and some of you may ask me that is this concept of coordinate frame at the end of the day what are we doing we have an inertial coordinate frame we have a vehicle coordinate frame we have a vehicle one coordinate frame we have a vehicle two coordinate frame and we have a body coordinate frame we studied the coordinate frames when we studied the robots so for an example here is what we did when we studied robotics one in robotics one we expressed the the robot arm or articulated robot arm as our first revolute joint then we had some prismatic joints so let me explain to you what i'm trying to do here could i for the sake of discussion assume that i have a robot arm that is placed and this is sort of a thought exercise i have a robot arm that is placed at the vehicle frame so my first joint of the robot arm is over here so what i want you to understand and bear with me for a second imagine that your vehicle frame is over here the vehicle frame is over here and clearly this vehicle frame is translated from inertial frame but it's it's trivial because we know how many units in x direction we should travel how many units in y direction we should travel next thing here that i want you to think about is just imagine that you have another revolute joint you have another revolute joint and i need to be clear this is uh, this is north this is east this is down down is z north is x so i need to write this down x and then east is y yeah and this is very important it will be very clear why i am writing this down explicitly y is about z then uh pitch is about y 
and roll is about x so i want you to understand this very carefully so the sequence that i have here is z y and x this is the sequence of euler angles that i am using to express the rotations from the vertical frame all the way to the body frame now here is something that i'm going to do i'm going to say that let's assume that i have a robot arm wherein i have a revolute joint which is something like this i have a revolute joint which is something like this which is aligned with this y axis and last thing last but not least is i want you to note and let me draw here i'm going to add one more revolute joint which is aligned with x so now i want you to note what is happening the axis of the first revolute joint is aligned with z axis of the second revolute joint is aligned with y and the axis of the third revolute joint is aligned with x so what this means that this first revolute joint is indicating your rotation second revolute joint and i will be i have to be clear because my axis is going in the downward direction and it needs to be positive my the the pitch is uh in this direction and then my roll is in this direction so i want you to visualize this that now i have three revolute joint so essentially what i have is i have an r r r manipulator that is describing the transformation from the vehicle frame all the way to body frame now here i want you to notice one thing since this manipulator is completely imaginary these distances you can be assumed to be zero so in other words i can assume this distance to be zero i can assume this distance to be zero and some of you may realize that this is nothing but the spherical wrist spherical wrist that we studied in robotics 1 but there is a subtle difference and the subtle difference is if when we studied the robotics 1 just to be consistent we used dh convention so we used dh convention when we expressed the robot arm we made sure that the rotation axis was z the next remember those four rules that we followed four rules for coordinate systems and those four rules allowed us to come up with a consistent representation in the homogeneous transformation and why did we follow that dh convention because we needed a consistent homogeneous transformation but guess what there is no homogeneous transformation in the case of aerial robots so you don't have to follow the rules of uh, the dh convention rule but the same concept can be used now some of you may say uh, how is it possible and i'm going to show it to you in few minutes but before that i want you to understand that the transformation from the vehicle to body frame is nothing but a spherical wrist 
that uses z y x euler angles where z is the rotation in about yaw so uh, the yaw is the rotation about z then you have the pitch rotation which is about y and then you have the roll rotation which is about x and that is the same convention that we used when we use um, euler to rot command in matlab so for aircraft we use north east down and you use euler angles z y x for the transformation before i go to the next part are there any questions at this point so it may be possible to study the kinematics of the aircraft using virtual spherical rest so what i'm trying to say is the the analysis that we perform in robotics 1 we are going to do the exact same analysis we are going to get the exact same relationship but the interpretation is going to be different okay any questions here if you don't have any questions i want to do a, a simple exercise and i'm going to use the conventions that we used in robotics frame uh, i mean robotics 1 and zubir let me finish this transformation and you will find answer to your question so what i want to do it is just a second so let me start with the convention that we used in robotics 1 so this was the convention robotics 1 convention we said 0 r1 which means rotation from zeroth frame to first frame zero r1 is the rotation now i just want to be clear in the current text in the textbook and i don't want you to get confused they instead of using the convention like this they use the convention like this but that means the same thing rotation from zeroth frame to first frame now in the last class we talked about the interpretation of rotation matrix and i will say that again 0 r1 rotation means that you have i0 j0 k0 i0 j0 k0 related to i1 j1 k1 so i have i0 j0 k0 relating to i1 j1 k1 now to answer the question where is this rotation this is the rotation about i0 or j0 or k0 now depending upon what type of rotation it is you would uh, get the appropriate rotation matrix now what i want to do is in the last class just to give you a quick description we derived this inertial frame to body frame coordinate transformation now what i want to do is i want to derive the exact same coordinate transformation using the sign convention that we used in robotics 1 because i think it is absolutely important for us to make the connection between the material that we studied and the material that we are studying so i want you to look at what we are doing an important observation here is check this out these rotations are from body to v2 v2 to v1 v1 to v so finally 
this rotation is going to give me r b v in other words this would be r b with respect to v and that's why i want you to note that the multiplication sequence is different and it will be clear in just a second so what i want to do is i want to start with something like this i'm going to call my zeroth frame zeroth frame is the vehicle frame i'm going to call my first frame as vehicle one frame i'm going to call my second frame as vehicle two frame and i'm going to call my third frame as vehicle three frame and i want you to be very careful here so from zeroth frame to first frame the rotation is yaw so uh, so from first frame to second frame the rotation is theta and from second frame to third frame the rotation is c this rotation is about z this rotation is about y this rotation is about x so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write down something like this 0 r 3 which is 0 r 1 multiplied by 1 r 2 multiplied by 2 r 3 that gets me from vehicle frame to body frame a word of caution please note this rotation sequence is vehicle frame to body frame but the sequence that we discussed earlier is from body frame to vehicle frame so i want you to be super careful between the rotation sequence that we discussed uh, yeah vertical 3 is the body frame correct so vehicle 3 is the body frame correct this is the body frame so i want you to be super duper careful what i'm trying to say here is this rotation sequence is taking us from body to vehicle but this rotation sequence is taking me from vehicle to body so this is going from this is r v b now if you look at the rotation matrices that i derived in the second class of robotics 1 you will realize that this is nothing but i'm gonna go ahead and write this down onto the next slide this is the rotation about z this is the rotation about y and this is the rotation about x so i'm gonna use the rotation matrix the exact same rotation matrices that we derived in robotics one so these are the rotation matrices rotation matrices in robotics one and you should have access to all the video lectures and again the slides so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these rotation matrices and i'm going to go straight quickly here and i'm going to write those down so they are if you recollect they are vertical line here i don't want to go on to the next page they are cosine psi minus sine psi zero sine psi cosine psi 
zero 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 one multiplied by it's a matrix multiplication cosine theta zero sine theta zero one zero minus sine theta zero cosine theta multiplied by one zero 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 cosine phi minus sine phi there is a minus sign here so let me write this matrix here so this matrix here one zero 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 cosine phi minus sine phi zero sine phi cosine phi this is zero r one one r two and two r three which means after all said and done i should be getting zero r three as the rotation matrix now what i'm going to do is uh, instead of performing this multiplication by hand i'm going to use matlab show this multiplication and then try to relate this with the rotation matrix that we derived in last class so what we are trying to do is we are trying to analyze the vehicle rotations as a virtual spherical rest so i'm going to go to matlab i will show caption and uh, before i switch screens any questions so i'm going to share my matlab screen and here you should see my matlab screen my symbolic variable r s y m s if you have matlab please open it uh, first will be psi then i'm going to have uh, theta and then i will have phi so this is psi is my yaw pitch and roll now i'm going to define r 0 1 is equal to cosine there is something else i want these values to be real so i'm going to say these values are real cosine uh, psi minus sin psi 0 semicolon sin psi cosine psi 0 0 0 next r 1 2 is equal to cosine theta 0 sin theta 0 1 0 minus sin theta 0 cosin theta last uh, matrix is r 2 3 which is 1 0 0 0 cosine uh, phi minus sin phi 0 sin phi cosine phi now these are my matrices now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this code actually let me let me do this r03 is equal to r01 multiplied by 
R one two multiplied by R two three. Cosine uh, oh yeah, P correct. Cosine phi R two three. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this code, and after I run this code. i want you to look at the the matrix that we have and by now you should have access to the textbook and or you can look at the slides from chapter 2 please note this r03 is referenced with respect to the the vehicle frame so this is a uh, 0 r3 which is vehicle r body so this frame is vehicle r body on the other hand if you do transpose r03 transpose this matrix this matrix is exactly same as the matrix that we derived in last class so i would encourage you to take a look at compare this matrix this uh, direction cosine matrix a rotation matrix and you will realize that this is exactly same rotation matrix that talks about inertial to body frame transformation in other words the roll pitch yaw of the aircraft can be solved using a spherical rest assumption and this is super duper important because when we try to derive the expressions you have to be absolutely clear in the coordinate frame and the transformations from different coordinate frames uh before i proceed further any questions and i want you to convince yourself that this transformation is the same transformation that is given on slide 18 chapter 2 same transformation given on slide 18 chapter 2 any questions here now since we have migrated to matlab i would like to give you some hints on the the problem so first and foremost what i want you to do is uh you have spacecraft to matlab in the matlab files it's a zip folder i want you to open that for a second so open all the files from canvas in spacecraft matlab so in case if you are wondering where it is it should be in the canvas course module so if you go to canvas if you go to canvas you should be able to see uh the so if you if you go to canvas i will show you where in canvas if you go to canvas matlab codes you have spacecraft matlab rar and spacecraft simulink rar so please open and expand these files the files in here now if you go to spacecraft there are different files one is translate there is spacecraft vfc there is run me first 
rotate and then there is draw spacecraft body now what i want to show you here is what is this spacecraft vfc the idea is in the last class we talked about drawing using the coordinates of individual points and using plot three command instead of that what you can do is you can actually create any object using vertices and faces so what here what i have is these are the locations of point 1 point 2 point 3 all the way up to 12 points so these are the coordinates of the points and then i'm defining the faces so basically the points point number 1 point 2 point 6 and point 5 is the front face point 4 point 3 point 7 point 8 is the back face right face top face bottom face and uh, so these are the different faces and just for the kicks i have defined different colors so red green and blue so red is 100 green is rgb so 010 blue is 001 uh yellow comes in the picture when you combine red and green so 110 cyan comes into the picture when you combined green and blue so 011 so these are the different colors and then i am specifying these different colors my red my green my blue my yellow my cyan and all that and this is the function so what this function is going to do is this function defines all the points this function is used just to draw the spacecraft but draw a beautiful spacecraft with different colors so now i want you to go to draw spacecraft body when you go to draw spacecraft body this function is going to take pn pe pd so the distances from the inertial frame phi theta psi these are the the angles please note the sequence of angle is slightly different so phi theta psi it's going to take a handle because we don't want to repeat drawing we just want to set and and use the handle and move and then here what i'm doing is i'm just calling the function that is defining the spacecraft points and then i'm translating and i am rotating first i'm rotating then i'm translating and then just to align the coordinate frames the north east down to the frame in which these points are defined these points are defined in the usual x y z frame where x is towards right y is going up and z is coming towards us from the board i need to relate this with the north east down frame so that is why i have this projection matrix the exact same projection matrix that we uh, derived in robot robotics 1 and then i have this handle so what i can do is i can say draw spacecraft draw spacecraft and i'm going to say 0 comma 0 comma 0 0 comma 0 comma 0 so p n p e p d c theta psi all zero no handle and i'm going to say none for move and run so draw space craft oh yeah draw space craft body 2 sorry draw space craft body 2 and then you should be able to see the spacecraft body and some of you say hey this body looks weird of course because this is not in three dimension so this is your spacecraft 
in three dimension why is this shrinking this is auto shrinking to make sure that uh, it's good and uh, the visualization is good so you got a colorful spacecraft so when you are going to draw the aircraft when you are going to draw the aircraft please note just like spacecraft in your aircraft there are uh i think let me quickly look uh about uh four, 16 points so you would have to define the location coordinates of those points and then you have to specify the faces that form the the faces of the aircraft and then with this code that you have you should be able to draw the spacecraft the aircraft any questions the next thing is how do we rotate and translate the good news is the code for rotation and the code for translation it's given to you so if you look at the code for the translation this is the exact same code that we used in last class to translate our wireframe spacecraft this is the exact same code that we used to rotate our wireframe uh, spacecraft however a word of caution look at the way the matrices are multiplied matrices are multiplied yaw pitch and row so we are going from right to left because this is the rotation this is body with respect to vehicle frame rotation that's why the sequence of rotation is from right to left and in today's class we showed the sequence of rotation from left to right when we are trying to find out the rotation of body with respect to the vehicle frame so v r b this rotation is b r v so that's why this rotation sequence is different now what you can do is if you want to draw the spacecraft i'm going to run this code this is the exact same code we used in the last uh, class to run the uh, the wireframe model run this code and now go to your matlab screen and i'm going to share the screen uh, here is something real quick you can see that rotated spacecraft I actually i should clear the screen I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to rerun the code. And if you see this, if you rotate, you would see the spacecraft rotating. Check this out. you should be able to see the spacecraft rotating unfortunately we are not clearing the previous frame that's why you are seeing the old and the new one yeah uh, i will show you uh, what you need to do is use the command clf which is clear figure and then it will clear the figure but i want you to understand that this is what is happening now so how do you put this together so in last one minute i'm going to show you how would you interface all this into simulink now for that obviously at this point i assume that you have downloaded the spacecraft simulink so you should be able to see the file 
So I'm going to clear all these files. I'm going to clear all these files and then I'm going to open spacecraft simulink. So add to file and again, spacecraft simulink open. And then here you have again, draw spacecraft. This draw spacecraft has a slight change. This is a nested function. So function within functions. So I want you to see that it starts with the input. So PN, PE, PD, UV, W, phi, theta, psi, PQRT, all these are given as inputs. You have the spacecraft handle. And what are, what's happening here is, check this out draw spacecraft function, the draw spacecraft body function is appended to the first function. So this is function within function. This is nested function. At, then you have the rotate function and then you have the translate function and then you have the defined spacecraft vertices and faces. So last time you had four different functions to run the code. But what I have done is I have created just one big function with all these codes. And why is that? Because I want to run this single function in Simulink. I want to run this single function in Simulink. And how we do that? For that, please open Massim Chap 2 SLX. So please open and bear with me. I know I'm running. Uh, uh, ahead of time, I mean, uh, we already got three minutes, but I want you to run this Mav Sim Chap 2 SLX here. Now, please note what we have is, this is the bus. So if you go to library browser, you go to commonly used blocks, then you will go to uh, a mux, which is called as the multiplexer. So you can create a multiplexer. Now, so what I want you to do is first and foremost, I want you to go to, I want you to go to library, go to user defined functions. These are different functions. You can incorporate a Fortran function. You can incorporate a C function. You can incorporate a call function. But I want you to look at interpreted MATLAB function. This is super duper important because some of the built-in functionality that the commands like patch uses is an interpreted functionality. So you won't be able to use that functionality if you use uh, just system function, S function, or just MATLAB function. You need to use interpreted MATLAB function. Right click on the interpreted MATLAB function. Now, once you right click on the interpreted MATLAB function, what it will do is it will open uh, this script. And this should be the name of the function, draw spacecraft. This is the same function that is M file. Output dimensions are zero because this function is not outputting anything. This function is not outputting anything. So you click OK and output signal is auto. Click OK. Now I want you to go back to the original MATLAB simulink code and run this. When you run this, you will be able to see the simulation running in the background. So what you should be able to see is something like this. Now double click on the sliders and rotate those sliders. And then you will see depending upon where it is, where your slider is, you can actually rotate the roll angle. You can translate. You can 
go left, right. Your angle, you can rotate in your direction. Now, please note, we have not set up U, V, W and P, Q, R, T. Draw spacecraft. So now it needs to be interpreted MATLAB function. So what you need to do is, yeah. You should be able to run the simulation. Now what is expected in project one? Instead of this spacecraft, you should have an aircraft. And I'm gonna show that code uh, in just a, bit, in a minute. Uh, any questions before I open the spacecraft code? So once you open the spacecraft code, there are multiple ways to uh, run that code. You can run that in the wireframe mode or you can run that in the usual uh, mode. So if you go to, this is the solution and I'm not gonna discuss the solution here, but I will show you what the solution would look like. Your draw aircraft would have the same terms as the draw spacecraft all the way up to this point. Again here, draw body will be the same as draw uh, spacecraft. The rotation code is going to be the same. The translation code is going to be the same. The only difference is this code is going to be different where you will define the vertices and faces for the aircraft with the dimensions that are given to you. And again, here is the last thing. Uh, I just want to answer John's question about the scaling. You can use this command V is equal to size multiplied by V to rescale the figure. So what you can do is see here, I have defined size as 20. So what you can do is finally, once you create the aircraft, just use the command size, size multiplied by V and then your spacecraft would be scaled. Now I'm gonna run the simulant code, just a second. And if you look at the simulant code, note here, everything is the same. The only thing is this interpreted MATLAB function is the draw aircraft run. And now you should be able to see your aircraft. And this aircraft will translate, rotate. And so you can see it goes forward, it can go backward. And this is a very important exercise because the next few exercises, we are going to run the simulations, kinetic models, guidance models, and interface with this UAV simulation. With this, I'm gonna stop here. My apologies for going uh, uh, ahead, uh, uh, extending the lecture by uh, five, five minutes, but I'm gonna stop here and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have.